cool.
Come in. No, no, no. She was saying everybody's so dressed up. Yes, I said, Sorry about that, folks. All right. Jean's dressed up every day. Seeing we have a quorum, we'll call the um, Board of Health to order for the May 21st meeting, 2019. Uh, we have some open discussion for the public right out of the bat, and then we have a chair report, health agent report, update on consultant, review of proposed pesticide regulations on tree lawn policy, and review of minutes from the April 23rd, 2019 meeting, and then we'll end with attending the select board meeting to uh, discuss the proposed pesticide uh, policy. So with that being said, I do see someone from the public if they'd like to speak. All I gotta do is say your name and, and where you live and uh, my name is Paul Sharp. What's on your mind? I am uh, I live on Mount Vernon Street. Uh, what brings me here tonight is the inspection traction, uh, tracking spreadsheet as a, a topic of concern in the pre meeting. People were asking, so I'm sharing. Okay. Uh, uh, and I and I see that you I know the there's a consultant you're considering or any number of directions. Sure. Of, uh, what data could be, it could get very complicated very quickly. And one of the things I, I've observed and what, reading through the minutes and watching the debate there is that there seem to be some fundamental questions that are not answerable in the way that uh, data is being presented right now. And I, and with that, I know there's some sensitivities with regard to what gets published for individual businesses. And I'm thinking that's kind of off concern that's a little bit off to the side. I'm thinking what brings information to the board and that would be helpful over over time. And uh, I wanted an opportunity at whatever appropriate time it might be to present a what I think is a straightforward design of just highlighting some very simple things or straightforward bare minimum data that over time uh, the board would be able to use as uh, a trend analysis and uh, indicators of where there may, may not be a problem or something worthy of looking at. You don't need to look at any of the, you need to, a flag that says there might be a problem over here because our level one issues seem to be increasing or this one establishment seems to be having problems every time. I mean, when, I, when I hear, uh, you know, I, uh, Laura say, well, I did 57 reinspections, dumpster things, but, but, but that, I mean, that's a lot of, there's no detail there. So, were there any reinspections that were reinspections of reinspections? Right. I mean, you don't know. Right. And, and you're not asking that question, and there's nothing for you to dig into. And that's where I think a simple uh, data collection of the event right. would allow over time. Yep. All right. In the last quarter, how many level ones were there? How many level twos? How many, is there a trend down? Is there a trend up? There a concentration of issues in any one area, and this is something that could be started you know, today, tomorrow, and, you know, and it would provide the board with uh, immediately accessible historical information that could be used. So that's so you have a presentation. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm asking. I didn't. I okay, didn't, I didn't bring one. I'm, I, 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 you know, I'm asking. I'd be happy to make one. Okay, or send you something, or. Yeah. Here, wherever you want me to, you know, wherever it would be appropriate uh, to, to do so. And, and this would, the benefit, I think, to the board would be here is a, uh, I think, a readily adoptable interim solution while you figure out the grand scheme of things. It would provide the board with accessible data that you might be able to say, oh, now I do want to go look at the detail reports of whatever you might want, whatever the indication might be. And that's my background of many years in operations uh, and spreadsheets are my life. <laughs> it's a sad to say, uh, but, uh, but true. But, uh, but anyway, that's, uh, I think there is uh, uh, something that could be helpful in a very short, low, with a low, you know, no cost, low startup, easy to, easy to apply. So I would like to have an opportunity to share that with the board whenever you think that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, I, I do know we'll be taking this up uh, most likely at our next meeting, uh, certainly in June. If you want to put something together, uh, I, you know we could. In, I, I could touch base in between then and now. We, you know, could include it as part of uh, the discussion for that night. That sounds great. Okay. Um, have you? Well, let me make this easy. Can you 
go on the website and just email your information to Laura, our health agent. Sure. Or do you have a car running now? Yes. Laura, you could get Sure. I have actually. You'll be back and forth. You have that, her info? Yeah. Okay. You, you were filling in the minutes uh, for me. I oh, asked, okay. that, that's, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you what I was thinking of. And, uh, okay. No, this, we can take it from there. We can include this part for the next meeting. All right, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for showing up. Um, chair report. This will be very brief because I do not have one <laughs> uh, this week. Um, very small, very quick, but I did attend uh, the last ARCASA meeting, though. Um, and I know we've talked about um, vaping as, as a future agenda item that I certainly wanted to see put on um, our, our um, agenda for future. Um, they, they have been discussing at, at, for a number of maybe even years now, um, after speaking with the director over there. So I think they'd be a really good resource that, you know, maybe we should have them in, or at least our, the uh, ACASA director in from one of our meetings, if we're going to have that on the agenda, uh, so we can discuss a little bit further. She has a lot of data points that um, she can go over with us in regards to the, um, that issue. So that's the only thing I have uh, for my report. Do we want to consider maybe providing the information? I don't know if people had a chance to see us in around vaping campaign that the state of Massachusetts is putting out, and I don't know if it's possible if we want a link to that campaign on our website, so maybe that's something for oh, okay. discussion. Yeah. Um, or something to hand out. It's mostly directed at youth, so it could be something Good. to share with um, schools also. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't know there was a, a, a big campaign you pushed. Do you have like some uh, info that you could send out to, or send to Laura and she could send out, I guess? Yep. Yeah. I can forward. It, it was right after our last meeting, so it was a month ago. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no worries. I can resend it. Thank yeah, you. that'd be great. Yeah. All right, Laura, that brings us to health agent reports. Too big, you might have to split it. Oh, oh it's or just a call contact ID. Um, okay, for food inspections and re inspections, there were 36 conducted. Okay. Complaints, animal inspections, and dumpsters. There was four complaints. All four were inspected and corrected. Four animal inspections. Two septic abandonments. I didn't even realize we had. But there's still some septic in town. About a hundred. Huh? And they tied up these particular two tied up to um, the town's water. Um, we have no flu shots that were administered. Obviously, it's too late in the season for that. Okay. And. For the Maven report, we actually have a few things. And Heidi might want to pronounce these for me. <laughs> to highlight it, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm not sure. Well, I'll just say norovirus. I mean, they can't. They can't okay, we'll go back. Okay, we'll go back to Ivan. I'm not sure. You'll lose. <laughs> Thank you. But then the flu. Yeah, so here. Are those flu board? Yeah, flu board. Yeah. So yeah. the. For, we have three cases of loose stool. Yeah. However, you pronounce that. However, oh, that's pronounced. Okay. It relates to loose stool, so it could have been a change of medication. It could have been anything really. Um, there was 15 cases of the flu, which is substantially down from last month when we had 73. Okay. But that season's kind of yeah. trickling, and we have one case of chickenpox. Oh, okay. The child. Or we're dead. We're dead. So we're not allowed to have information. I just get numbers. Oh, okay. So I only got three loose stool, 15 flu, and one chicken pox. And <coughs> we did all the tobacco inspections. So that's 18 tobacco inspections and compliance checks. They're all conducted in April, and there were no viol violations found. Good. And those were done by Maureen Busby, the consultant. The one that we've had a little longer. Right? Yes. And then our inspector, Cami DeMillo, has resigned. So that was effective May 2nd. And uh, we started the procedure for reposting that position. Okay. How long does that take to fill a position like that? Typically. Has to post it. Yeah. Depends. Um, it's such a tight, such a full employment. 
markets. We don't always get robust response. So, uh, but we did just hire a community development director and an economic development director. So, we're on a roll. Okay. Is the inspector position the fall? Full time, okay. yes. Okay. meeting, right? Were you here? I forgot. Because uh, I know we, we, dis we discussed it. I think it was at par, I think. Oh, maybe. Okay. I think you and I both came in late, actually. I think. Yeah, yes. Okay, so maybe it was a... Yeah, yeah. Because I'm in the minutes. minutes. So, you were here before. So, I was like, right there. <laughs> minutes, so, okay. So, I know we're just starting the, um, uh, that, that process actually segues right into the next one, which is the update on itself. <clears throat> so, we were going to, we were originally going to have, um, I, 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 Get the woman's name. Pixality. Yeah, uh, thank you. Pixality, come in, and we're going to wrap that all into. Okay, how exactly do we want to go through this and kind of um, kind of go through the full um, full mechanism of getting the best information that the board wants and and putting it in, into what I would consider probably an easily um, something that's easy to decipher for um, for us to be able to see if you know. And similar, similar to what the gentleman said earlier, how there are red flags, other multiple things going on with different mm -hmm. businesses. So that is definitely something um, that we are going to discuss. I didn't want to put it onto this meeting because obviously we're, gonna be, we're having the pesticide rate, uh, policy yeah. meeting with yeah. uh, your board um, right going right from this afterwards. So we we're going to put that on for the next meeting. But there is an update that I'd like to hear because it might tie into some of the questions you had. For the consultant? Yes. So you're hiring a consultant. To, to determine what documentation the board needs to fulfill its obligations to the state. Well, la last time I recall that we also need to do redo the um, master plan uh, coming up as well too. So we're going to kind of wrap it all into one. Um, and have, if we're going to have this person out here doing this, they can also help us with um, coming up with how we want to handle the inspections. The, the thought is that you know this is something that somebody has already figured out quite easily rather than us trying to figure it out or reinvent the wheel, have somebody kind of show us what that wheel looks like. Well, it's been done before, uh, previous boards, 
and you just see the inspection reports so that they can verify, oh, okay, there was a violation and it was corrected in the next, in the next inspection. Um, and, and that's, I mean, it's not that difficult, it's just a, a documentation of the, the inspection reports. Um, they're public records, so anybody can go in and ask for them. Um, so I think it's reasonable for the, the Board of Health to have this documentation, in fact, they should have this documentation to demonstrate that you're fulfilling your obligations to the state health regulations are followed and the op your obligations to the state which are many um, are being followed as well. Yeah, and, and as well as there was a gentleman you missed earlier who was here or he was here I think because you're watching him. Okay yeah so I'd like to hear um, see what he has to say. I'd like to see all all the options that we can come up with and, and I, I know it's been done certain ways in the past but there's no reason that we can't um, can't modify or change it and maybe that ends up being the easiest way. So you, you haven't gotten any uh, documentation or made, made, uh, you're still working on this? We're, yeah, we're still working on this. We're still just kind of going on this, the protocols we have been for the last six months or so. Uh, the previous two years? From the previous two years? Well, I know it's been modified a couple different times, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. So you, you haven't seen any inspection? I have. So I came and met with Laura and Jean over the past month because one thing that you wanted us to do this month was to sort of <laughs> do the best we could, do our homework, and figure out right. what data we would want to make available, right. Right. Um, how accessible should it be, what's the best format for making it accessible. So I did look at five, I mean, it's you know, a very small sample um, of the reports. For, I mean, I can like, pass them around and I'll help. I could just, yeah. It does fall under the okay. work, yes. Um, should I go around? Just yes. to say, I can pass these around if it's at all helpful, but it was, I think, really helpful for me to be able to see what information we're gathering so that I can help make a decision just to understand exactly what, what it is that we're looking at on health reports and um, to make a decision about what we would want. Um, to make a decision about what we'd want accessible and how, and you know, what might need to go in the database. Um, and the, so the five that I saw, there were inspections that occurred, and the, all of the violations were corrected within the month. Um, so, you know, I don't know if we're getting into that conversation now or if we're going to table it until next month, given the priority of talking yeah. about the policy. Yeah, well, I'd prefer to have it as an agenda item because that yeah. gives it. Um, allows for the public to come in and comment on it as well yeah. too. I just want to just be clear when you talk about how much information you want to make available. It's they're public, public records. Right, they're public records. So you really should make it, it should all be available and accessible to the public. Uh, it's not a question of picking and choosing, but um, it should all be available to the public. Right. All right, I'm going to run. Okay, <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I do want to uh, let's let's talk about the update on the consultants. Who is talking about that? Did you? Do? Okay. So did we jump to peg salary? Thank you. 
position with the town of Danvers. And um, so I uh, provided a scope of services that he and I talked about, and that's in the packet tonight. Uh, I apologize for the lateness. We went back and forth a few times. So, okay, that's fine. Um, this is when I uh, got take my name, please. <laughs> Andy, is that your jacket? Thank you. <laughs> I'm not forgetful at all. So what um, the consultant and I discussed was um, creating a path forward for the board and for the staff. And I know we touched upon that a little bit last month. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe if we had a third party come in and work with us, we could, um, we could create that communication tool that I think people are talking about. Yeah, right. And we could also take stock of where we are in terms of the master plan that Peg did and think about what we should be planning for in the future. Um, so what he's suggesting is um, he could come in and um, clarify roles, responsibilities, and improved information sharing between staff and the board. He could do that. Um, he is an organizational uh, consultant. That's what he does. Um, and given you know that we've had um, some challenges, it seemed like um, trying to get an external consultant to figure out how to move forward was one way of trying to deal with this. And um, his background in organizational development um, is very specialized, and this is what he does. He, he works on um, how to get people to move forward. And um, so I think that the possibility of hiring him or someone like him um, I'd have to circle back with our procurement people to figure out what the procurement process would look like. Um, but the second page of his outline has a process outlined. And um, it really talks about um, sitting down with staff and the board and synthesizing interview data, basically interviewing people to try and get a, how, to, how, the, how this, we're stuck. Some way we're stuck. You know, how to get us unstuck? That's work. Um, okay, so this would be different than if Peg was coming in here. We won't be using, we wouldn't be using this person necessarily to help or at least start the process for the uh, five-year master plan update. I think we could probably um, kind of what he talks about is a uh, a current reality assessment. So assessing kind of where we are right now. Okay. And what what the struggles are, um, and talking to people one on one, I think in interviews, and trying to get at what the, what the root cause is of where we're at, and then moving forward, um, trying to create a process and trying to facilitate um, some kind of path so that we can. Achieve the goals that the board wants to achieve, and, okay. and maybe frame that within the existing master plan. Okay. So it would be more about clarifying roles and improving communication, but not really about helping to make inspection reports more easily accessible. No, I think like, that's what he said. Is that he wanted to. Um, To understand what 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 people were tr trying to get at, and I think he said in one of the paragraphs that he wanted to um, understand what the best way is to do information sharing. Oh, I took that to mean information between, you know, for example, the board and maybe the public. Maybe mm -hmm. um, I didn't think it entailed the public, but. Um, it seems like his expertise is about helping organizations get unstuck, yep. as you're saying, yep. rather than website design, 
you know, right. like we saw with Newton that right. building, for example. Yep. Okay, what's everybody's thoughts on that? I mean, this is just it's one. It's just one person, right? It's one person, and, and it's one effort to um, come up with a scope, and he puts as the first thing finalizing the scope of work. Mm -hmm. So it's really up to the board what kind of scope you can envision. Is there um, the ability to speak with this person at a, at a next meeting before <laughs> hiring them oh, formally? Uh, well, I, I don't even know. What, I haven't even pursued it beyond okay. just this because I, I have to. We can't just. I think we have to go through a procurement process. Oh, we still do, huh? Well, I want to double check that. Okay. I didn't. I didn't go any further than just what you see in front of you. Okay. I, I just didn't know if this was the kind of thing the board wanted or if this, you know, it's, it's, it's on the pricier side, so like, yeah. you know, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. Really yeah. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's an interesting approach. I was, I was kind of hoping for, um, or something more like Peg's background that had that's kind of worked with boards before, uh, specific, specifically in regards to um, health divisions. Yeah, he, he worked in Danvers and did a kind of a master plan for where Peg used to work in Danvers, which was kind of similar to our castle. Maybe it was under the schools. Okay. But I can do some more digging. Maybe um, DPH has. Some information other communities have gone through this process. I'd be happy to spend some time on that, digging around other other things. I guess what I'm trying to get my head around what is it that the board is trying? What would a scope of work look like for a consultant? Would it be? I mean, maybe maybe we with the spreadsheet. Maybe that's that's the easy part. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Maybe we, what we should do is maybe hold off on the consultant. We'll have um, a gentleman who's in tonight. Was his name Paul? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't sorry. Me. Uh, I think his name is Paul. Paul. I his last name. Um, there was somebody who came in for um, the open open meeting at the beginning um, for public comment, <clears throat> and this said he, he deals in operations and you know he thought he could put together a presentation for us that would be very easy for us to implement. So I told him, you know, to go ahead and send that to Laura. We'll communicate um, with him between now and the next meeting, and put him on um, as a speaker um, yeah. at, at our next meeting. So maybe the easiest thing to do is let's see what this gentleman has. If you know, it sounds like he has some operation background as well. Um, maybe he's willing to. That's free labor. That's free labor. <laughs> it's, you know, um, so don't do too much okay. digging. I don't, I don't. I don't want you to. Yeah. You know, I, if we had. Peg, we knew it was easy. Yeah. Information was already there. You didn't really have to do much to, to, to get yeah. a hold of her. That was different. I don't yeah. really know that we want to start um, sourcing this around too, too much until we think we need to for a, uh, for the master plan. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't we take this one step at a time? We'll have this person, uh, Paul, come out present to us, see what they have, what, what he has, um, and then we can discuss it as a board and see what we like, don't like about it, what have you. Sound good to everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Gina. Appreciate it. All right. So, um, as everybody knows, we're, we are going to be moving into the select board meeting um, when we're finished here tonight um, to present to them uh, what we've been um, working on for a while now. <laughs> um, but it, this is kind of just the, uh, the overview. Um, for the pesticide policy. Uh, I know they have it in the packet, the one that we last talked about, the one we last changed the language on. So they have the most current one. And I was going to just give a very brief history. Let me pass this around. Um, I don't know what I'll say. I'm going to have this say this verbatim. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, do you want one of these for this question? No, okay. I think they're going to put it probably end up having the minutes for yeah. the select board meeting in place. So we actually have to include it in our minutes because it was. Because I, it was, cause I passed it out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can take one of those. I just want to make sure I don't want to after. I may have to collect one or two back. Um, this is just a brief summary that I put together. I had already sent it out to the select board chair, um, vice chair, and town manager. Um, and it's kind of what I want to discuss um, both here tonight, but also um, what I wanted to present um, to the board, which is just a brief summary about where we are, how we got to this um, point, what we're asking of them, what that um, uh, their role in all of this would be, so they can understand a little bit better where we're coming from with the, uh, with the policy. The town council has not reviewed this draft policy felt the best course of action was for us to actually discuss it with the select board and if there are any additional changes then coming from them that we're going to agree to or would have you or modify this in any other way. Um, he felt that as though having both boards sign off on something that they'd be okay with this before he looks at it is a better course of action. So um, that's what, what landed us um, in a meeting with them tonight. And so that's kind of what we'll discuss. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of questions um, in regards to that some of the uh, particulars of it, but like I said, this is just a, I don't want to take up a, a lot of time talking because I know we're going to have a lot of questions, so this is just a very brief summary uh, that I was going to go over. I just wanted to make sure everyone was okay with, with that, with me going over this um, from a presentation standpoint to the select board tonight. Or if you have any changes, modifications, I'm happy to hear those as well, too. something incorrect. Um, I'm pretty sure the gentleman, I, and I may, that, did I put a question mark there? I thought I had a question mark there. I believe there, yeah. I, believe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think when I, yeah, I think when I talked to the, um, the health agent from Marblehead originally, I think they said it's been enacted so long um, that they, they haven't had one complaint. They don't, they don't, I don't think the actual health agent was around when it was enacted. Um, so maybe they had someone initially, but you know, there's no historical knowledge that, um, or maybe I, he told me they hadn't had any complaints. So it's interesting uh, in that regard. I just thought, I, I found that, that part particularly interesting. So they, they, well, we adopted this from Modelhead and, and kind of made it our own and changed it around a little bit. Um, you know, they, they weren't, they, I was hoping they'd be a better resource to say, how did you handle this? You know, this is kind of going back when we were talking about how do we want to handle um, regulating this, right? How, how do we want to look at that from a violation standpoint, from a complaint standpoint, from a fees standpoint? And I, I hoped we'd have great answers from from the original drafter here, but um, they had nothing <laughs> that they could share with us in, in that regard. So uh, I think we go one step uh, better in this one where we do make it more of an educational um, point up front, which is, you know, if there is a complaint lodged, it's and instructs the, the health agent to then send out notice of that complaint to that person along with the new regulation, making them aware of, of what it is and, and, and what the complaint is surrounding, uh, also making them aware that, you know, future violations could potentially uh, end in fines. But, so um, where theirs just jumps right into fines, which I was hoping they had some, for instances on that. The only thing I'll say here is, you got? <laughs> it says it will read that the first offense is only a warning of the use. Mm -hmm. um, the wording is not correct because it's not yeah, an offense, it's not right? Offense. Right. First complaint. First complaint. Yeah. Okay. And the one thing I wonder about is that I wonder if it makes it sound like if a person is being complained against multiple times, then fines might ensue. And I fear that misses the point that the health agent does go in and determine whether or not violation has been made, which is up to the methods that she deems. I don't know what those methods are, but we still going with the so, honesty factor here? So there's not much, if you recall when we talked about the, there's not a whole lot that we can do. Um, she can investigate, um, you know, as, as much as, as possible. There's not, there's not a lot that she can 
do with the person just saying, no, that's, it's, not, it's not a pesticide or it's, it's an allowable one. Um, All right, and so I think there are cases where, I think we've talked about, the person can contact the business that did their pesticides and the business could provide them with information like, oh, these are the chemicals we used and you could prove it was fine and we determined that, yes, there would definitely be cases where that you just can't get that evidence, right. you know, it's cost prohibitive, right, so right. test the samples. Um, but I just wondered whether or not we wanted to make it clear that you couldn't just have somebody complaining against a neighbor 65 times and we're going to be finding them because there are so many complaints that there's an intermediary. That doesn't, that doesn't, where the right, so. Does some investigation. The complaint you know, itself doesn't dictate right, fine. Exactly. Is that it's, right? Right. It's not, it's not I'll just make sure multiple I, yeah. complaints. Okay. okay. How we determine? No. <laughs> we decided that there may be a lot of cases where we can't. Yeah, yeah so it the, be it's, it's based on you know, that paragraph in, in regards to mm -hmm. what you shall <laughs> do. But there may be cases where we can. Probably kind of. Like, it only says that you shall, well, um, like, if you, you find that the investigation is warranted, the help page shall investigate. Like getting that record. And right, right. if the help agent finds that there's been a violation of these regulations, really um, then the take the necessary actions. So it, it, we left it kind of open that, yes, um, you shall investigate it. Um, what that investigation entails is, is going to be um, what <laughs> <laughs> probably a probably a sequence of events, right? First, of, I'm sure I'd be asking, are you using this? You know, what type of product are you using? Right. So it's it's really left to the health agent to do the investigation as they see fit. So if I get a complaint that someone has been first, using pesticides, a, a complaint. I send them a letter. Yeah. That's the first complaint. That's the first the complaint. complaint. And then the second complaint, I call them, and if they say, no, we did not use anything, okay, ball stops there. Okay. You just okay. yeah. noted it. And if they say, I don't want to talk to you, or like, do I have can't, any back, like, do I have really, any, like, I don't think you can really. This? I don't think you can really make them talk to you. Okay. Um, can we ask for the evidence? Can I? <laughs> I mean, it seems in the course of she's doing her best to conduct an investigation. She does what she sees fit, and then at some point gets to the end of that investigation. I think that could include asking them oh, to send it, yeah, information use, from the business. Uh, or, yeah, if you're using a business, can you give us the name of your business? Yes. Yeah. So business you're using. Yeah, I, I think part of this, the reason why it's open-ended, and um, it, it allows you to do what you feel necessary um, to conduct an investigation I'm just but thinking if, if you're looking for more specific detailed steps uh, that's something that the board could certainly give you um, like I'm just thinking okay they use pesticides and it goes to court like do we have any legal teeth to hold up the tickets or like I, I don't I'm not exactly sure where my power lies in this so that's a question like above. Our, to, that's a question above our pay grade. I, I just don't want to like randomly be sending people tickets and then them going. Yeah. Well, you'd only be sending your tickets if, if you, they tell me if they, they use tell you that they've used them, or they tell you the company that they've used, and the company says they've used them. Right. So it has to be talk, by a company anyway. So, so if, if they, they say they're not using, I, and I, I hate to belabor the point and yeah. be a pain, but if they tell me they use chemicals, I give them a ticket. If they say no or nothing. I drop it. I mean, we. If you feel okay, like you've exhausted. As long as I'm understanding this properly. Yeah, if you feel like you've exhausted that. I just want your options to black and white out. on when I can ticket them that it will stick, or that I want to. And am I still doing a spreadsheet? A sp what do you mean? spreadsheet like for where these locations were. Or? Well, this would this is probably mm, that's a good question. I think it would be like any other complaint tracking. I don't really envision having to like map them 
Right, maybe if it got to be a substantial number or, I mean, do we So map? just say, okay, I got 10 complaints this month, 10 people said no, it's closed. 10 complaints this month, three people said they do use pesticides, I send them the letter, next time I'll send them a ticket. Is that I'm typical asking. of what you would do for other complaints? I yeah, I think we're walking them through this a little bit. Um, I just, when you guys decide. I just yeah, I was going to say, I, I think this is something that we should probably um, figure out for you a little bit more of a, a direct, um, clear path, um, which we can do. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it has to be in the policy itself, but it can be a directive voted on by this board. That's fine. As long as I have a black and white way. Yeah, I see. What, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I think that's something we'll we will uh, we will provide that for you at the appropriate time. I know we're going to have a little bit of a rollout period for this as well too. It's not something that the board agreed to it um, tonight, which I, I don't think they would anyways. Um, as it said, I feel like they probably want to have or probably, and should have a uh, public hearing on. On the matter as well. Um, so between you know now and then, and actually rolling this out um, officially, we can get you a clear guidance. Okay. questions for discussing this tonight with the select board. Um, do you anticipate the select board taking a vote tonight? Or? No, I spoke with the um, chair of the select board and her feeling was I think the same thing that I had put in here that probably should um, go to another uh, public hearing. One, because we've changed it since the last public hearing um, when we had it. Um, but I think if if the select board is going to adopt this, I don't know how the, what the legal term is or allow us to implement it might be mm -hmm. legal term. Um, they probably should have their own uh, public hearing on it. So I doubt they'll take a vote on it tonight. Um, the discussion seemed to be to, because there's a lot of new board members as well too, that this is the first time they're seeing, hearing of this to mm -hmm. just to introduce it, to talk about how the town council wanted both boards to have their full input in this draft before sending it uh, to him for that review and uh, probably put it on for a different uh, night, uh, I'd assume around a public hearing uh, on it. And then the select board would decide whether or not they were going to adopt it. Right. And then they would Probably at that, at that time, yeah. yeah. If that's the course they're going to go, I, I, that's, the, that's the direction we kind of talked about yeah. uh, that should go. So I'm assuming that's the direction it will go. But, but they'll, they'll decide, they'll decide tonight. Yeah. 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 yeah, they'll decide tonight what, which direction they want to take that. Okay. But I, I, where town council hasn't looked at it, I yeah. can't see them taking the vote tonight. Yep. Um, so. I have a quick question that maybe nobody at this table can answer. Um, this might be a town council question, but um, I have seen that there's at least one other town in Massachusetts that has done, a, and I don't know if this is legal, they did a full ban on glyphosate even over private property. That's not so maybe what is this? Huh? What is this? Warwick, or Warwick, Massachusetts. Is it Warwick, Massachusetts? I know, I don't know. It's some like tiny. I think that was the name of it. Okay. I can Google it again, but. You find the um, most obscure location. Oh, I think, well. <laughs> um, so, what is that? Um, is that rated as a one or a two? No, uh, it's not. Um, they elected to do it, I think, two years ago. Other towns have been discussing it. Um, so they were able to put a 
ban on a product that the state allows over private product? I believe that's what they did. That is definitely a question for town council. Because <laughs> that sounds like a lot of legalities involved in it to, to get something yeah. like that to work. I think it was over, I'm pretty sure it was. Population of 780. It's tiny. People? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a tiny Podunk town. Okay. In Franklin County. All righty. Yeah. So, did they vote? Was there a town vote to do that? Or the Board of Health? I think the Board of Health just implemented it. Because I don't know what's in town. It's probably on the Board of Health. That's wrong. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean. If you want to dig into that and find out a little bit more about that, that, that's interesting. I don't know how they could, I don't know how they could legally pull it off, but it sounds like they did somehow. I think um, when we bring this to the next meeting, it's important just to really define the, the scope of this policy and the, the way we're talking about it is we're talking about town land and mm -hmm. we're talking about yeah. this policy applies to people that are trying to apply pesticides to town land, and I think that will just help give people perspective we're not trying to right we, we can't regulate private property you know it's, it's limited in scope sure um, yeah. yeah yeah and it's specifically I'll, I'll make sure i bring up that it's we're talking um i i believe originally the um the purpose behind this was more specific to um sidewalks that's still technically considered a tree lawn right. because it's town-owned property, mm -hmm. but having this all spill out onto the sidewalks where people are stepping on and carrying, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. dogs getting in, uh, on their on their um, paws and whatnot. That was, I think, the the realm where this kind of morphed from. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, again, same thing. It's a anything. It's town-owned land. We can we can certainly uh, enforce uh, what we need to on that mm -hmm. section of it. But yeah, it's a good point that we're not we're not doing this on your land. Right, and I think that speaks to you know Marble Marblehead hasn't had any complaints because they probably have a similar tight scope, you know. So it's very possible we roll out this policy and no one's paying attention and no one's <laughs> commenting, um, no one's complaining. Yeah, and and, and I think part of this um, and what I want to share with the select board and I know we've <laughs> talked about it here is that rolling something like this out definitely has an educational component to it that, that we really need to be the drivers of that bus and make sure that we are um, educating uh, the public on what exactly are we talking about and yeah, you know there's there's there's, portion, there's a section in here obviously that i think is great because it lists um, acceptable um, and, and allowable uh, pesticides or references where you can look these up yeah. as well as where you can look up the ones or not. Yeah. So I think that's an important component as well too that it's not just a we're, we're rolling this out and saying you just can't use this. Or at least show them what you can't use this. Yep. There's an alternative that's not saying you can't use any pesticide. Mm -hmm. You just you can't use these ones that are, that are deemed at that level one and that level two category. One thing I could add to this is that uh, make it that these are not pesticides that people can apply them that typical residents can apply themselves level one level two and right not. okay they not there you need to be a licensed applicator okay so this isn't going to be something that you because some of the chemicals because it's not just about the chemical it's also about the concentration so while some things you might find on the shelves of Home Depot do contain chemicals that could be in that classification. Um, the ones on the Home Depot shelves are not because they're at a lower percentage. Even the black label ones? That like kill literally everything? Do they say danger? Oh yeah. Then yes, if they say danger then yes. I'm pretty sure they all actually have like those some say warning. Some say caution, yeah. and some say danger. There's, there's a different, those are different. Okay. So are we sure that it can only be applied by licensed individuals? I guess maybe not. Okay. So maybe we'll <laughs> but I do think that part of the strength of having the policy is that it doesn't just fall on policing individuals, is that it makes a statement for any businesses who are going to work in renting to know according to the Health, I'm not allowed to use certain 
policies there. So it's educational, not just for individual citizens, but for anyone who would be in business on the tree lawns. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, I think like when we had talked about it a couple years ago or a year ago, most of the companies don't spray on the tree lawns, but they don't really do that anyhow. I mean, I don't know if you have to check with everything, but I think they're in the habit of not spraying the tree lawns. Why wouldn't they be spraying the tree lawn? Well, I don't think they're spraying with the chemical. Like they're not doing that. Like they'll, they might do the person's home, but they're, they're they know that it's yeah, they do, land. yeah they're not doing the sidewalk. You know, or, yeah. maybe I, they I do. I don't front. believe that's accurate because I had a guy, a homeowner, call me irate because they thought that the Board of Health had already banned it. He wanted his money back for the section around his corner <laughs> property because the pesticide company was not. Spraying that area. Yeah, but was this a um, without a sidewalk? Without a sidewalk. My guess would be that the the companies, if they've been instructed to not, you know, to only spray on the land that the person owns, but if they see a sidewalk, they're probably not spraying on the other side of it by the street. I don't know if he had a sidewalk. He had a letter from the board of health saying that they couldn't spray on it, and that's what. And you see, a lot of the problem with writing is we don't have it's not sidewalks everywhere, yeah. so you have what you think is your property all the way to the street. Right. And it's all nice lawn and you take care of it, you know, however you take care of it. So um, I could see them, you know, not caring about spraying that, but I'd be surprised that you know, they may not want to go over that sidewalk. They may, may have been instructed to. Maybe not he might not sidewalk. even have a sidewalk. I don't know. He, yeah. was, he was going after them because he had calculated how many feet around his property. <laughs> OK. And I know that the pest, that the pesticide company did did spray the area. Stop spraying it after that. Did star or stop? Star. Okay. Where did this go? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So it's all good feedback. I'll, I'll make sure. Um, yeah, I'm not kind of going through this verbatim anyways, this is just something I wanted to pass out uh, to the board, uh, to the select board, so they have it just from a discussion standpoint. Um, so I'm assuming everyone is planning on attending? Okay, so it should be fun. I think they have a few things on the agenda for us. I think they had a slot at around 8.15, was that I was told correct? Yeah, you and John the last time. I remember that. Oh, I couldn't ago, make that. Maybe it was June, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Was it June? Interesting. We were, it was, yeah, we were it was trying. before I was on. Yeah, okay. it was sometime last or maybe. I know okay. our plan last year, we were trying to get it before we could start putting cameras right. on the lawn. Yeah. We still have time. Yeah. I know. It is 8.15. It is 8.15. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, what do they have on before that? So we have a little, little downtime here. Why don't we finish up some of the business that we have? Unless anybody has any further comments on um, our joint meeting tonight with the select board. Well, all right. Um, why don't we go and we'll do the minutes and then we'll decide what we want to do from there. Everybody have a chance to review the minutes? Any changes? I do have one. Okay. Um, I made a comment last time, and I feel like the first part of the comment was in the notes, but not the second part. <laughs> it's on the, it's page three. Um, Sean Cock expressed her support for being collaborative with the business community, which I did do, but then I emphasized that but my main priority was public health. So I was wondering if that could be added to the minutes, that second part of what I was saying, and I was probably long-winded, so maybe it was hard to. <laughs> I will look it up, and I will make sure it's exactly the way you said it. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks. I think I said a lot of stuff in the middle. Is that okay? 
So, well, then, yeah, we'll just have to table this to uh, next meeting to, um, to approve the minutes if we're going to do it that way. Okay. I don't have any problems. All right. So, we will table these to the next meeting. Um, so, I was going to have us just go in to the select board still in session, um, but we can, um, or we have a little downtime here. Maybe the easiest thing to do is we can just um, adjourn, adjourn this meeting now to reconvene um, at 8.15 in the select board um, meeting room. Um, no? Keep us convened. Because <laughs> you're posted. Well, we're just sitting here. If I, if I adjourn. Or we can, um, can we, we can't we can adjourn this meeting to reconvene? No, we can't. Okay. I think you run into a posting problem. Posted here for 6 30 in the conference room. Right. But you're going to move to the select board. So if you were posted for the select board meeting separately, that would, I think you could. But you're not posted I see for what that. You're saying. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Are we posted for the select board meeting? Yeah, we are. We're to, to attend the select board meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to post with the town clerk that this board is. If because technically that's almost like yeah, two I meetings. Yeah, I know. I think the select board posting said select so, board and board of health, but we're just a select board. So this I, board has to be posted. It's just. What board. I was trying to get get around is they have the badge pinning tonight. Normally it's fine. We just go in there and sit in there. Uh, that place would be mobbed, and, and yeah. we want to leave some seats for families and friends and uh, stuff. It's a it's kind of a. It's the most crowded night that that, the, uh, that that room will see. So I was trying to avoid us standing in the hallway. I think that's probably. Could you maybe take a break? Time. So they're supposed to go off at 7:40. Okay. Nothing says you can't take a break. We will. Um, why can't we take a half an hour break? I think we'll um, take a half an hour break um, and reconvene in the select board meeting room at 8 o'clock. Everybody good with that? Sure. Okay. So that means we're still. We're still, um, yeah, we still. Be. <laughs> yeah, we're on break. So. We're on break, but what we don't want to do is off camera. Mm -hmm. Talk to one another about right. public health. Right. Okay. <laughs> so for the next half hour, anything but public health. <laughs>